Hi, my name is Manish Gupta, and in this video, I'm going to talk about Metformer, which is basically a Matryoshka style trained transformer model, uh, and therefore it's nested transformer for elastic inference. Okay, so let's get started. How is the Metformer model trained? So the Metformer model basically is a elastic transformer architecture model, right? So it's basically transformer architecture but it also brings in elasticity in the sense that uh, these transform models can basically change in the number of parameters can be used in a, a, a such that the number of parameters are different uh, at train time versus test time okay so let's understand it more so as you can see from this picture uh, it's basic this is how a, a metformer block, block looks like it also has self attention and also has feed forward uh, network right in the standard form uh, it's just that uh, uh, you know, in this particular picture, in fact, what they've shown is that this feed forward network can have nested block structure. So it has this Matryoshka representation style learning where the transformer block could basically have, uh, you know, uh, could have uh, uh, T1 number of neurons versus T2 versus T3 versus T4. So essentially, it's like a nested block uh, architecture where uh, the feed forward layer essentially rather than, uh, of course, it has a max number of neurons, let's say, you know, um, uh, 10,000 neurons, but uh, it could also be trained with uh, 5,000 neurons or 2,500 neurons or 1,000 to 50 neurons and so on. In fact, they train with four different nested levels. Uh, with different feed forward network ratios of, uh, uh, you know, whatever is the dimension DFF, DFF uh, by itself or DFF divided by two, DFF divided by four and DFF divided by eight. That's basically the four different um, levels of nesting that they train the model with. Okay. Now, let me talk about training first. So, so by the way, nothing has changed in the self attention layer as you see here. Okay. So, so in the standard metformer, they basically just make changes in the feed forward layer. But I'll also talk about later. I'll talk about the changes that you can potentially make in the self attention layer also. Okay. So, at train time, the parameters of multiple nested uh, FFN blocks are optimized with varying sizes. So, as you see, these nested blocks have different sizes, and they're optimized uh, all together. Um, in the in the in the uh, at the training time, okay. So and it is trained in a Matryoshka style manner. What does that mean? That basically means that if there is this layer of size ten thousand, as I said, the first one thousand five hundred one thousand two fifty are a part of the overall two thousand five hundred, which is a part of the overall five thousand, which is a part of the overall ten thousand. So the idea is that uh, when you're training this model for every batch, you first sample a metformer granularity. So you basically say that, hey, my feed forward layers are going to have 1,250 neurons or 2,500 neurons or 5,000 neurons and so on. Okay. Uh, and then uh, you basically train uh, those, uh, the, the first, uh, you know, first 1,250 or 2,500 or 5,000 neurons or, or you know, 10,000 neurons, depending on whichever, uh, whichever granularity you selected. And this granularity is applied for each of those layers. So at train time, you basically, uh, in some ways, choose one of the four networks and train them. Okay. So overall, after training uh, across many many batches, you'll basically you would basically have trained one single universal model, but overall you would have produced G accurate nested sub models. And uh, where G is the number of granularities, in their case, they choose four different granularities, uh, specifically these four where the DFF, the hidden layer uh, feed forward network size is basically um, uh, re reduced half to half or one fourth or one eighth, right? That leads to basically four different sizes of models. The largest one is Excel. Of course, there are small, medium and large models, okay? So, so that's that. So at train time, essentially you choose this, this, this or that, you know, those four different sizes uh, for every batch. At test time, you can basically do mix and match. What does that mean? You could potentially have like a mat lm uh, mat former language model small in which case you choose for each of those layers small size but you could choose small size for everyone except this guy where you are choosing large size right or you could choose medium size for everyone or you could basically choose a mixture of medium and large or you know a mixture of uh, or, or basically all large and so on okay so in at inference time therefore you could basically have different granularity for each layer uh, which basically results in smaller submodels, uh, exponential number of such smaller submodels. And the interesting part, as, as they observe empirically, is that these smaller submodels have high consistent behavior with the universal model. 
So, so you know, if the universal model is predicting something, these submodels are also going to produce something which is very close to the universal model predictions. Okay. Uh, typically, the mix and match that they do, uh, the selection of the granularity at each layer is such that you gradually increase the subblock size as you go from from the lower layers to the higher layers. Um, so, which basically also means that. Uh, you know, if you are basically, let's say, processing query logs as input and you're trying to do some sort of classification on top of them, for simple queries, you could basically use, uh, you could you could sample smaller hidden layer sizes, smaller feed forward sizes for each of those layers. But for more complex queries, you could basically choose larger feed forward sizes. So it can handle dynamic workloads with varying query complexity. Okay. Now, as I mentioned, this is basic uh, in, in the in the paper. The main experiments basically they show with uh, um, such elasticity in the Matformer architecture for feed forward layers only um, by varying the feed forward uh, hidden layer size. Right? However, you can actually also bring in this elasticity in the self attention layer by actually doing Matryoshka style representation learning with attention heads. So you could sort the attention heads and then you could say that, hey, maybe for the small model, I will use two heads for the medium model, you know, four heads for the large model, eight heads and for the Excel model, I'll use 16 heads, right? Where the two heads are a part of the first two in the four heads and for the, those four are first four in the eight head case and those eight are the first eight in the 16 head case. Okay, so how does Matformer perform? Uh, now, in the paper, they basically show that uh, this Matformer kind of uh, architecture works for both decoder-only language models as well as vision encoder models. So specifically, they train MetLM's language-only decoder models and uh, or decoder-only language models and vision encoders MetVITs. So uh, they, here's, here are some results. These results are based on 25 English tasks, and the models basically vary from 78 million parameters to 850 million parameters, depending on whether they are small, medium, large, and Excel. Okay. So on the x-axis, in each of these plots, you see non-embedding parameters on the x-axis. On the y-axis, you see loss. So of course, lower the better. Accuracy, higher the better. And consistency with the Excel model, higher the better. Now, what you see is that there is this red thing, which is the baseline. So baselines are models of that size, which are trained uh, from scratch, not in a matformer kind of a way, right? While uh, uh, matformer is the standard matformer, matryoshka style transformer in that sense is right. And then this is the matformer with the mix and match at inference time. Okay, so basically you don't want to have the same granularity, but you can have variable granularities. Okay. So as you can see that these two guys basically have four different sizes, small, medium, large, and Excel, right? But these uh, mix and match style things, you can have as many as you like. I mean, you can basically have like potentially, you know, two raised to four different sizes in that census. Uh, uh, or other, yeah, I mean, even more sizes, right? Because for every layer, you can basically choose any of those four. So if you have like six layer models, you could basically have like, uh, uh, you know, four raised to six different uh, potential sizes, right? So what do you observe? So uh, uh, all of the, and, and by the way, the Burton and OFA are other baseline models, right? So, so what do you observe? So across different uh, charts, you observe uh, that, um, you know, the blue ones are always better than the red ones. Red ones are the baselines, blue ones are metformer models, right? So metformer models outperform baseline models, okay? trained independently from scratch. Okay? What you also observe is that, uh, you know, especially from, uh, you know, uh, you observe that, uh, of course, it's not shown here, sorry, these are just for language, language based tasks, but um, uh, in the paper, you can also see. Uh, vision results and in the vision results, it is observed that MatVIT large models actually they provide uh, greater than 40% less compute overhead just with 0.5% drop when you do mix and match. Uh, this drop is in accuracy, these are experiments with accuracy for ImageNet 1000 task. Okay, so basically, it's a nice way of compressing models as well. You can basically end up using less than 40% compute, 40% uh, less compute with just a 0.5% drop in accuracy. Now, also what you observe is great consistency. So uh, on the right side in this plot, what you observe is that uh, uh, this is consistency with Excel model, okay? So essentially, if you look at it, the Metformer model, uh, the largest model actually is 90% consistent with the uh, with, with, with basically the Excel model itself, right? 
and you could of course do mix and match uh, and uh, not have sizes as large as excel model but still basically get up to 95 percent accuracy in that sense now of course you know if you really train smaller models from scratch clearly they are not going to be inconsistent typically models trained from scratch are highly inconsistent with larger models in that sense but these ones since they are trained in a sort of a uh, ensemble kind of a form in a single stage training all the all the four models train in a single stage training in some ways they're pretty consistent with the larger model okay now these are also good to improve on the speculative decoding accuracy so let me talk about what is speculative decoding speculative decoding is a method for faster inference so um, uh, you know, this is besides metformer itself so typically the way speculative decoding works is basically explained in these two steps uh, you use an accurate lightweight language model as a draft model for speculative decoding. Uh, when you want to decode from a large model, you actually also train a smaller model. You use this smaller model as a draft model to auto regressively keep generating the next few tokens. Since it's a smaller model, it can generate faster, right? Uh, and the larger model takes its own sweet time to verify these drafts. Okay, uh, through parallel decoding. Now, uh, if these drafts are found to be inaccurate. Only then the draft model is rolled back. And then you, then you basically tell the draft model, hey, you roll back, you made a mistake, you know, uh, and uh, you take this larger model's output and then speculatively, de speculative, uh, speculatively decode the next few tokens. Okay. So if the small model uh, continues to generate the right drafts, you basically don't roll it back. Okay. So while doing this, what happens is that you end up inferencing much faster, inferencing the next few tokens much faster. Um, now, the interesting part is in Matformer, the smaller models are highly consistent with the larger models. If they were not consistent, you need to roll back several times, and that basically uh, washes away the gains that you can get with speculative decoding. Now, in Metformers, because the smaller models are highly consistent with the larger models, the speculative decoding, uh, uh, you know, uh, uh, um, basically goes through uh, much lesser resets and much lesser rollbacks of the draft model. And that is why, as you can see, the, um, the inference gains are pretty good. So baseline um, speculative decoding basically just gives you about one point, uh, about 10% gains, but metalm based decoding gives you 14% gains. Similarly on Trivia QA, while the baseline just gives you 8% gains with speculative decoding, metalm gives you 11% gains. Okay. So in summary, Matformer uh, or Matryoshka style transformer are elastic transformer models. Um, they basically involve training a single universal model, which can be used to sort of extract hundreds of smaller accurate submodels at uh, zero additional cost at deployment time. Okay. Um, you can basically choose a simpler submodel for simple queries or, com or, or larger submodels for complex queries, thereby enabling handling uh, of dynamic workloads. Matformers also improve speculative decoding, and uh, you know, there is a, a, a you know, and this is specifically because they result into consistent submodels. Okay, that's it for this video on Matformers. Hope you liked it. Thank you for watching. Connect with me on my LinkedIn or look at my research on my homepage. Thank you.